All right, so in this video, I wanted to go through how to close out a point of sale session, whether that's after the end of a shift, before the next person takes over, or if that is at the end of the day. So what you're gonna do is you're gonna go into this closing uh, button here. You do have to be an administrator uh, or someone that's a manager of the point of sale to be able to close out a session. Before I click on this, I wanted to highlight if you're using an IP based printer, there is this uh, session report that you can click on that will send the session details to your receipt printer and you could print off all of those details. If you're not using the receipt printer, if you click the close button, there's also a report download here that downloads the same report, but it'll be in a eight and a half by 11 format instead. Just downloads as a PDF. It has the product details, product sales quantity, the payment methods you've received throughout that day, and any of the taxes and amounts that have been collected. So again, you can print that using this button up here, or you can download it here, or technically you can also print it directly to your receipt printer if you're using an IP-based printer. From there, you'll see a bunch of different numbers and uh, data here on the left-hand side. This shows you what your opening cash amount was. Um, right here, in this case, we opened with no cash in our drawer. We took $644.54 worth of payments. We took you know, $474.30 through bank. Um, normally, we, we actually call that you know check or whatever you want to call it. We had no terminal, but we had some manual typed in credit card transactions. Okay, so depending on your settings and everything, It'll allow you to go through and you can adjust these if you feel that they are wrong. So when you go to count your checks, normally the manual credit card, we don't uh, modify that one. Uh, but when you're doing your, your ending cash control, what you wanna do is you can either type in the amount, count your drawer and just type in the total. Or if you want a, a little easier way to, to add it all up, you can click on this calculator, which is gonna pop open this total calculation box. From here, you're just gonna go through and enter the quantity of all of the coins and bills in your cash drawer and you put the quantity of the coin. So this is not a dollar account. Um, it is a total number of coins. And you just go in here and I'm just tabbing through these and entering the number that we have of each of them. And you can go through and add them all up. You know, we don't normally have, and you can control which of these currencies you want for each of your sessions. So say you don't normally use 50 cent pieces, it's not a very common one, so you can leave that blank. And just go through and you can fill everything out based on what you have in your till. Once you're done, go ahead and confirm it and it will automatically add the total here and it will put in the notes, the coin breakout and the, the, the money breakout in the notes at the closing procedure. Okay, so I'm not gonna go through and add that up, but it should, by the time you're done counting, and rather you use this or manually count and add it, this difference column should say zero. So this is what they expect to have in your till based on what you started with, what payments you had throughout the day. You count your till, and if there's a difference, it's gonna tell you that you have a discrepancy. If there's a discrepancy, you're gonna have to go back and find out why and or just go ahead and post with that discrepancy if it's an acceptable discrepancy. Uh, based on your configurations, the discrepancy that's allowed can also be configured. Um, and we have, depending on if you have this turned on, we have this special feature that says the amount to leave in your cash drawer. So you can set a default amount in the configuration. In this case, it was set at $200. I wanna keep $200 in my cash drawer. Now, I'm also typically lazy and I don't like to count my coins all the time or remove all of my coins. So a lot of times I'm gonna keep my $200 plus whatever my extra coinage is, that's actually in my cash drawer. So I might do 254 and just leave the coins. And then I'm only gonna pull out the $444. I'm gonna leave whatever my extra coins were in the system. That's completely up to you. But this is the amount that you wanna leave in the cash drawer for the next session or the next day and then we're only gonna pull out the difference. So this is the amount that we're leaving. And in theory, I'm gonna pull out that 444 and put it in you know, our vault or whatever your bank deposit procedures are. From there, once you're done, you're just gonna go ahead and close your session.